Hello friends, welcome to the in-person Blossoms and Bourbon event and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time and willingness to be here and have a couple of cocktails and do some flowers. Sound, sound good? Um, awesome. So because in Blossoms and Bourbon we always have drinks um, and at least sample bourbon, we're going to do that first just to kind of loosen you up a little bit in case there's any anxiety about doing the flowers. Emma with Blue Ridge Catering is here as our bartender tonight. And she's gonna show me how to make the first cocktail, which is a paper plane. And I promise I won't make you drink the one that I make. <laughs> we'll let Emma do that. Hi. Hi, Mark, thanks for having me. <laughs> sure, sure, what are we doing? All right, so tonight we are starting with the paper plane. This is a very classic tasting beverage, but it was actually invented in New York City in 2008. Nice. So very basic. The good thing about this, it's the exact same measurement all the way across the board. Oh, so everything, good, because that typically confuses me. Exactly, three quarters of an ounce all the way. And we are featuring the knob bourbon in this tonight. Nice. All right, so if you would like to start with that. Okay. Is so this... this is a three quarter jigger already. So oh, nice. it makes it easy. So I don't have to like guess. You don't have to count, guess. Okay. Or if you just count, to make sure you count the same time I'm every I'm so ingredient. much more comfortable with flowers, actually, <laughs> I am discovering. And then we're going to pour it into here. Okay. All right. All right. And then three quarters Aperol. Oh, the pretty so red stuff. Gonna, exactly. It's going to give it that beautiful color. You're going to get bitterness. Isn't there a big trend right now in Italy for Aperol spritzes or something? Absolutely. So it has definitely come back. So it's very common um, as an aperitif. And then we're going to do the Amaro Nonino. Do you have to be able to say it to use it? No, no, <laughs> okay. you can completely butcher it. Okay. It tastes the same no matter how you pronounce it. You and can always say, and we're using this. What is it? It is very similar to Campari, a little less bitter. Oh. You're gonna get a little more floral note, a little spice out of it, kind of a caramel. Floral note, we like floral notes. All right. And last ingredient fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh, okay. I work so hard on this lemon juice. The love you taste in it, all mark. Right, right, right. All right. Okay. And then add a nice scoop of ice to that. Okay. More. I think that's good. Okay. Four more cubes makes it perfect. All right. All right. And now shake it. The appropriate length of shaking. I like my cocktails extremely cold, little icy. Yeah. So keep going. Okay. Let's walk around the room. <laughs> <laughs> you could. All right. All right. And then you're just going to strain this into the pretty glass. Pretty glass. And that color gorgeous. Oh, man. And then that shaking is going to give you a little dilution as well as that chill. So it's going to increase the volume. And then we are garnishing it with a candied sugar or lemon peel. Okay. And that's it. Oh, look at that. So uh, should we taste? Yes. You go and whip up some more for these folks. Okay. <laughs> Pretend like you like it. Oh. Ooh, that so is nice. So the good thing about this one is that it's a bourbon drink without being, oh, a bourbon drink. It's yeah, really. a very good I'm not sure I would even cocktail. guess that there's bourbon in this. No, exactly. So drinks are coming. Um, let's talk about flowers. We're going to do the bundled greenery mechanic tonight. If you've watched the videos at all, um, this is one that I did, I think, in a Christmas arrangement where I bundled Christmas greenery together and then created the arrangement around it. It's a very easy mechanic um, and one that I know you guys are up for. So you want no greenery in the level of the water. So we're going to make sure that everything below water level is nice and clean. And we're just going to start to bundle these together like this, kind of facing each other. If they're a little long. We're going to do a snip little trim. So we're kind of making like a little rosette pattern almost. He looks good. We're going to leave him. Now, depending on the size of the container that you're using, you may want to do more greenery or less greenery. 
you can mix in other types of greenery. Um, all those things are appropriate. So I think that's pretty good for about where I want it to be. Yep, that's good. Feel free to tighten it up a little bit, maybe a little bit shorter. Here's the arrangement that we're actually going to finish. And as you'll notice, you can't even see this greenery down inside this vase, right? So it's really going to be the mechanic, kind of just the foundation for it. Be sure and turn them so they're going in different directions. So you kind of have that kind of like rosette shape down inside. And Daniel, you can trim just a little bit off the bottom so they're not quite as long. And the piece of wire that's on your table is for just binding it together. You're literally just going to tie this little bundle together. That's it. Give a little more twist so that you have them kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not all facing the same direction, but yeah, that's good. And then this uh, wire is bind wire. You've probably seen me use it a lot. It's a paper coated wire. Great for all kinds of, it's like bread twist ties, essentially. So you're just gonna twist that wire around the greenery so it kind of holds it in place. You can use your snips to cut it off so you don't have that long tail of wire sticking out. It's not gonna hurt the wire to get wet. This is the complicated part. You're gonna kinda wanna do a little measurement like beside the vase. So you've got the greenery resting down on the neck of the vase. So it kind of does that. So if it feels like it's a little wonky, like the bottom's touching and it's like moving around some, and you want to trim it just a smidge more, you certainly can. This is going to move around as we're putting flowers in. So just kind of mentally prepare yourself for that while I have another sip of this drink. How's that feeling? Good? You've almost made an arrangement. I mean, look at that. Probably just a little shorter, Kara. And good for taking it in baby steps. <laughs> now, we do have some other greenery in your buckets that's going to go in this arrangement eventually. But this is just kind of the foundation. This is kind of what's going to hold the flowers in place. All right, so the first flower that we're going to insert is Bells of Ireland. Um, one of the rules kind of with arranging is that in the beginning we're going to establish the overall height and width of the arrangement with the first couple of insertions. So with this we're going to, and I got these really cool wonky, <laughs> you have pretty straight ones Lisa. A good rule of thumb for height is one and a half times the height of the container. I typically just kind of eyeball that. Um, here's the tallest point. You can see that we're definitely at least at two, two and a half times the height of the container with this. It doesn't look unbalanced. That's kind of one of the important parts is you want to make sure that it doesn't look like it's going to topple over from, from the height. So one and a half times is the minimum, but you can go a little bit higher. Cut at an angle so that your flower takes up nice, uh, the water nicely. And you're going to kind of go into that greenery bundle, but go a little bit to the side, not directly in the center. If you go in the center, of course, what's going to happen is you're going to hit that top point and it's not going to go anywhere. Good. Okay. And then the next one is going to just kind of, you can see it in this arrangement. It's just going to kind of mimic the vertical note of the Bells of Ireland. Just kind of another, so you can make it a little smaller. There, there's a term that we use in the workroom at the shop not to create bunny ears, which would be this. Okay, so when you have two of them and they're very similar in length, so you don't want to do that, but create something that's just a little bit different. So there's different heights. The thing I love about the Bells of Ireland, as you're finding those shapes, the natural twists and turns, give it a really fun kind of whimsical line without you having, even having to do anything. 
All right, cool. All right, so we've established the height of the arrangement with the Bells of Ireland. We're now about to establish the width. So with the carnations, there are these little leaves that are growing along the stem. You want to take those off because we don't want any foliage, no matter how small or insignificant it looks, to be down in the water. I will tell you that one of the really cool things about this mechanic is that you can do this with it. And if you have something in the water, you can pull it out, it gets gross, you can change the water, and then it just goes right back in. This vase is a vase that we do a tape grid with a lot at the shop. And with a tape grid, you can't do that because everything's worked into that tape. It's great for delivery because it keeps everything nice and secure, but it's not very friendly for when you're trying to change out water. This mechanic is great for that. So we're gonna kind of just visualize where you want the bloom to be on the left or the right. Okay, so the stem kind of is over here touching the vase. This is about as far out as I want it to go. So I'm gonna cut about right there. And then you can just kind of work it in. And then we've established one dimension in this direction. That's right, Robin. Now, in this case, we're using the same flower to establish the width on both sides. You don't have to. You can totally use a different flower and have the same effect. I will tell you that there are lots of flowers that are probably much easier to do this with, 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 that was fun, than a carnation. The carnation stems are not very pliable and flexible. And at these little nodules, they tend to just snap. And so if you're pushing hard against that vase and the side of the vase with your carnation, you may snap it a little bit, but um, that means you're a real florist because it happens to us all the time. So then with the other carnations, we really are just gonna kind of try for sort of even distribution of the color in the arrangement. I'm gonna do one, like in this arrangement I did, it's a little bit higher. So it kind of complements the height of the Bells of Ireland. And then I'm gonna do a little shorter one kind of in the front. So we've got some orange kind of all worked through. Okay, so that's kind of where we are with that. Next up is gonna be the sunflowers. Now we're gonna put the sunflowers in next because they have big stems, they're hard to deal with, their stupid little heads face in one direction or another, they're difficult and challenging. So we wanna get them over with early in the arrangement. So because it's a very prominent flower, you really kind of just have to figure out the placement of where you want them. I've got one kind of low because I want that bright color to kind of serve as visual weight down low in the arrangement. And then I've got another one up high just to kind of balance it. So I'll probably repeat that same thing here. Remember to cut on an angle, probably a little bit shorter than my carnation is. And one thing, because the stem is so big, as you put it in the greenery, you've got your stem cut on a sharp point angle twist it. That'll help move it through the greenery. Okay, just give it a little twist and it'll sneak its way right down in there. I promise. <laughs> you know, trust your eye. You know, part of this is, you know, kind of instinct about visually where you like something. If it feels wonky, it probably is wonky. If it feels stable, then you've probably visually got the weight kind of where it needs to be. And please don't fret about the fact that they're gonna move because they're gonna move. We're gonna add more stuff to it and that, that will help keep them in place, but um, the little darlings are just that way. So next up, we're gonna do the little mini green hydrangea that's in your bucket. I love hydrangeas, period. Doesn't matter what color they are, what shape, what, <laughs> I just love them all. I didn't bring it tonight, but when you're cutting hydrangeas and you want to extend their life, make a fresh cut on the stem, again at an angle, dip it in alum. So alum is like at the grocery store in the spice aisle. 
It's what you use to make pickles and it keeps pickles crisp and it has the same effect on the flour. It'll help keep it crisp and from wilting. So because it's a relatively big kind of rounded flour, I'm gonna go low with mine, probably over on the other side opposite the sunflower. Um, so for visual balance, I think that's a good, a good thing. It's also good because hydrangeas take a lot of water and the shorter the distance that the water has to travel from the bottom of the stem to the bloom, the better your hydrangea will be and happier. <laughs> All right, so next we've got these beautiful hot pink, who says zinnias, who says zinnias, zinnias, yeah. Um, these are actually from a local flower farm. So we wanna get these guys in there because it's a big kind of focal flower. It brings a lot of attention to itself. So we wanna work those in and kind of get the placement on those. All right, so visually decide where you want that bright pop of pink. Fresh cut at an angle. I'm going up high with this one kind of, oh, did you see that? Completely missed the vase when I went in. And then with my second one, I'm gonna go around back because I do want this to arrangement to kind of be viewed from all sides. So I wanna be sure that I'm putting something in the back too. <laughs> I like this. You have a definite front, okay. but that's, there's not a thing in the world wrong with that. Okay. I like it. Lisa is just letting those bells of Ireland fly. Nice. These look good. So next we're going to do another big flower. And sometimes that's a challenge when you have lots of things that are kind of similar size. And that's these roses. This is called Shimmer, and it's a beautiful, beautiful rose, as you can just see this amazing color in it. So before you start sticking them in the arrangement, let's talk a little bit about the rose and what you want to do to prep it. First of all, those little wonky petals that are on the outside, those are the guard petals. The purpose of the guard petal is to protect the flower, and that's why they're called guard petals. So you just pull them off. They are the ones that are often bruised and shipping. They get, you know, wrinkled and cut. So then you end up with something much prettier once they're gone. I tend to like the look of an open rose a little bit. So there's this secret about doing that right in the face of the rose and it'll pop the petals open a little bit. I'm sure you've seen this on TikTok and Instagram where you can take the rose upside down and spin it in your hand. That will also help reflex those petals out on the bloom. And that's another thing that we wanna clean up the stem before we put it in the arrangement. Pull off any foliage that would be below the um, water line. And if you haven't used one of these before, this is a thorn stripper. And so it's got these little V's that are cut in these arms of it. So you just put the V's over top of the stem and pull. And when you do that, it just pulls those thorns right off. You might want to try. You can also rip the head right off the rose. <laughs> Let me tell you about doing that too. Some of these didn't look like they had many thorns on them, but all right. So then, yep, another rose, I mean, or one of the roses kind of up high, again, going for some balance. I'm gonna tuck my other one kind of in the front near the hydrangea, just cause I love this color with that green hydrangea. Now, depending on your goal, if you're trying for a very symmetrical kind of roundish arrangement, you really should be starting to see that form at this point happen. If you're trying for something more asymmetrical, you definitely should be seeing that too. We're at the point where, you know, the kind of finished form of the arrangement is really should be pretty visible. All right, at this point, we're gonna put a little bit more greenery in there so that we can kind of help hold these flowers in place where they are. You should have two stems of this, which is called Florida Ruscus or Upright Ruscus. It's a great, incredibly hardy foliage, very hard. It, it does not perish 
for days on end out of water. Uh, we love it at the shop because it is so hardy. So this, because of its shape, can also help create line in your arrangement. Or, like in the case of this arrangement I made ahead of time, it just basically is kind of filling in. So you almost don't even see it because it's kind of tucked in and it's really sort of becoming part of the thing that holds the whole arrangement together. So maybe for tonight, make it part of the arrangement, cut a little bit lower maybe and kind of make it part of the, the greenery in your, <laughs> what does that look, Danielle? <laughs> You're doing great, just keep going. Next up, we're gonna put in this purple fuzzy stuff, which is called Bluebeard. It's also a locally grown flower from a flower farm in the area. And isn't it pretty? I just love the color, I love the shape of it. I like everything about it. And so part of the reason I chose this is because it's kind of wispy. So we have a lot of round, kind of very well-defined shapes in this arrangement. So for me, this is gonna kind of help to open it up and make it a little more wispy. So really, you can kind of put this wherever you think you need it in your arrangement. I kind of have mine going out to the side because I want it to kind of feel a little more opened up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the salvia can ju is just another purple moment, which can go in there to kind of add to whatever you've got going on already. I'm kind of obviously trying for sort of an even distribution of those purples in there. So I looked at where the two blue beards were and then picked a spot kind of opposite that for the salvia. All right, so for my arrangement, I forgot to put the hypericum in my bucket, but you have two stems of hypericum. Because we're at the point now where we've used line flowers, which are the Bells of Ireland. The Florida Ruscus is kind of a line flower. Form flowers, which are typically rounded, are basically everything else we've been doing, the carnations, the zinnias, the roses, um, the hydrangea is a form flower. So we're now at the point where we're doing filler flowers and the fillers are gonna do exactly what their name implies. They're gonna kind of fill in. So the hypericum, I love it so that you can actually see the hypericum because I love that texture of it, those little round balls. So just work that in where you feel like you have maybe an opening in your arrangement that needs a little something, something. All right, so also in your bucket, you have this long spiky greenery. This is a form of olive, which again is a great line flower. So you can leave it long and extend the line of the arrangement. So with that, I can even make my arrangement even taller because it goes beyond the Bells of Ireland. Or you can do a little trim like this, and we'll have a short piece that'll go in here, and then a longer piece that'll go in here, a little bit lower. So you get a little more fill in in some of those spaces. It's really a pretty, I I'm not, was not familiar with um, this type of olive, but it also is a locally grown um, foliage that comes from one of the flower farms that we use. Because without even trying, you can put a stem of that in your arrangement, it just opens it up. It just feels more open and wispy. And then the last filler is this solid ego. And this really is, again, just another filler, a kind of a moment where you're gonna say, oh, there's a spot that needs something. And to my eye, with only the sunflowers in this arrangement, it needed more yellow. So that's why I chose Solidago. It kind of helps continue the look of the yellow through the flower arrangement. It's got this sweet little curve on the tip too. So you can kind of use that to extend the line of the flowers out just a little bit. And you kind of get that sweep to it, which is awfully nice.
then after your solidago, the last thing that you should have, if you and you may have already used it, and if so, that's quite all right, is this lemon leaf, Salal. It too is a really hard foliage. It's very durable, <laughs> puts up with a lot, and is very um, sturdy, both in and out of water for a long period of time. And basically it just adds sort of another texture. I tend to, after you've got the mechanic of all that baker, which is in flower world, the least expensive greenery, these are a little bit more expensive. So I kind of go around and tuck that in around the edge so you can see the pretty expensive greenery and it helps to hide the cheap greenery. The beauty of this is that there's not really a right and wrong. You know, what I'm telling you are just some kind of rules to go by, some kind of pointers. But honestly, the, the whole exercise is really just to enjoy it and to create something that you like. All right, so as you're tidying up, we want to do another cocktail? Sure. Oh, sure. All right, Emma, take it away. All right, so we are stepping back a century to doing a version of the Boulevardier. So this was invented in 1920s Paris. We are doing it with a peach infused maker's mark though. Oh. So this one is going to be a stirred, not shaken cocktail. So we have our maker's mark. We, this is also going to have Carpe Antica vermouth. And then we're also featuring the Amaro Nonino in this one as well. So it's to show that like, you have the same flowers, but everybody has a unique thing. We have some of the same ingredients, makes a completely different cocktail from the first cocktail. That's awesome. Cause I was just saying to you earlier that I bought a bottle of something to make a cocktail and now I have it in my cupboard and I don't know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. So this is where you can be like, Oh, I don't want to have the same thing. Adds a little different level to it. How did you infuse the maker's mark with the peach? We actually used frozen peaches for this one and then just let it sit for 48 hours and then strained it. Nice. Okay, yes. cool. So what do we do? All right, it's going to be an ounce and a half of your bourbon. So we have an ounce on one side, half on the other. So okay. one of each there. And that's going to be built into here. I like to build it without the ice because you're not starting that dilution already. So I put my alcohol in and then Good call. add the ice. All right. All right. All right, and then half an ounce of the Carpe Antica. So this is just a sweet red vermouth. Okay. So color and flavor. Exactly. And then one ounce of the Nonino. Look at me remembering to turn that over. <laughs> I wouldn't have judged you if you'd had to do two. Right, right, okay. All right, and then a little ice. Okay. All right, and then just give it a good stir with that. Now we bought the big cubes. Oh, love a big cube. Exactly. And then you're just going to strain it like the other one into that glass. So this is a little boozier. Ooh. Definitely a more traditional, I would think, when people think bourbon cocktail. And then we did Luxardo cherry and grilled peach garnish. Ooh. This is what makes you and Blue Ridge so good at what you do. <laughs> it's that cherry, it's like, the Luxardo oh. cherry. That'll get you. Cheers. Oh, that's really nice. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Okay. Let's whip up some for our peeps. <laughs> for the peeps. All right. How are the flowers going? They look great. Bravo. We're going to have to do a group picture, you know. I like it. Oh, nice. Nice distribution of colors. That looks really good. I like the greenery kind of flying out of the top. I like these wild. I, I, I know. This I know about you. So, yeah. <laughs> one, side. one thing I'll suggest mm -hmm. is when you look at it from the side. It looks ugly. Well, no, 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 no. It doesn't look ugly. It just makes me feel like it might tip. Oh, okay. So I would just adjust the placement so of the I flower. What I did wrong is yeah? I think I bound the, the bundle too tightly. 
Okay. And so I couldn't get things into the bundle. Well, you really don't. You were correct if you bound it really tightly. I think I bundled it too tightly, and so I had a problem getting things in. Okay. So you do have to kind of work around that tie point. It's, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that was my mistake. Can I adjust this? Yeah. So I couldn't get things in until all the carnations snapped. And so oh, it gotcha. Was a problem from the beginning. Gotcha. So basically, I just moved two things, but from the side, it already just feels more balanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, it's really beautiful. The colors are nice and... Well, you picked all the colors. Well, but I like how you place the colors, too. Lucy? Yes. Bravo. How are you feeling about it? I love it. Good. Good. I like it, too. I really the bundle. I know. I just... I like this. You know what I like about it? Can I tell you what I like about this? That I have no vision. And that, just... No. That you're here drinking and no... <laughs> It really, I think it's totally your own spin on this because it's more compact and tight here, but it kind of has this crescent shape about it. I think that's beautiful. Thank you, Mark. It looks nice. No, it's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Karen, I'm coming your way. Lovely. Oh, I mean, this is really beautiful because it's round. It feels light and airy. Was that your intention? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. And this, you look like you've worked in a shop for years. Turn that around. See, going for another career or, I mean, both of you, look at, they just look great. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, so we're going to have another cocktail. We'll just chat for a minute. Um, maybe with this group, I should have planned two arrangements because you guys just kind of blew through that first one. Uh, right, right, exactly. Which is four cocktails, Danielle. <laughs> well, everybody, I want to thank you again for taking your time to be here tonight and to be a part of the second in-person Blossoms and Bourbon. Um, and so until the next time we meet again, or until the next time you see me on YouTube, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks for joining.